Another thing you can do with paragraph styles, which is really cool, is we can write, let's say, so here, we create, we wrote this, right? And that's just something that we put on the master. So if we go back to our pages and look, all these have a master set to them. So let's go to a master. And so here's our master page. And right now on it, it just says this, which is just standard text. And then here we have a marker for the page number. So if you don't have that, all you need to do is when you have a text box, you right click insert special character it's a marker it's current page number that's a because we're on a master so it displays a but then if you go to any page you'll see it actually has the page number so just how that works which is a special character that gives you page number we have other types of special characters that do stuff like that that you would use on the master so the master you don't want to be writing things that need to be changing because then you're basically going to make a master for every page that's different. And then you'll end up with like a million masters. Whereas the point of the master is to automate these things that you can. So let's say um, this will come in really helpful when you're doing your thesis and you have to do the big book for it. If you start early with InDesign. And I know a lot of people that took their portfolio from my class and basically did a save as and deleted all the work and then adjusted it so that because all this stuff once you've automated it it will always continue just like what we've had in grasshopper with all those definitions you set it up and then your workflow is seamless after that you're just basically feeding it information um, so let's say that on the other side of the page I want it to display what chapter I'm on without making an individual master for every chapter so how could we do that so what I want to do is I'm going to copy this one, just hold Alt and just drag it over to that side. And then what we want to create is not this, but if you right click and you go to insert special character, oh no, it's a variable because it's going to be changing. And there's this thing called a running header. So a running header is basically what we're trying to create even though it's at the bottom so technically it's a running footer you can put this at the top and it'd be a running header so what these are it's gonna be just like the page number was a placeholder this will be a placeholder but instead of putting an actual um, word or anything like that we can create this and then tell it what it needs to be referencing so right now if I go to running header it just says running header right and then if I go to a page that has a master, it just says foreground. And then this one, what does this one say? SketchUp and Podium. So where is it pulling that from? So it's whatever it said up here. So we want to control it to say Project 3 or something like that, and then put the next piece. So let's go back to our master. And let's actually edit this. So we have that in there, running header. So where is that coming from? If you go to type and then you go down to text variables, you can insert them here. See how like it has a bunch of different ones just like we had when we were in here. We can also define. So when you go to define, you're basically saving these to be whatever it is you want. So when we go to define, it lets you choose what kind of variable do you want. Running header. And then let's make a new one. Or we can edit one of the ones there. Let's just make a new one. So what type is it? It's going to be a running header. So let's call this advanced dig. And let's put main title the first step is what do you want do you want to be referencing page number creation date custom text that way you just put whatever you want in it um, different stuff and then if you look at the bottom you have running header from character style or running par running header from a paragraph style so this is the one we want 
from paragraph. So now it's going to be looking for a certain paragraph style and then the use we can put first on page and then text before, text after, delete end punctuation, change case. That's if you want, if it was all lowercase, you can make it all caps at the bottom or all lowercase at the bottom. And then what do you want it to say on the master? Um, so I'm going to tell it it needs to be looking for the chapter titles. And then you can do either first on page or last on page. And I'll show you what this does. Let me just create it first, and then you'll see. Um, but basically, first on page means wherever this lands, it's going to look up the document. So imagine, like, over here you have this, and if you scrolled up, it looks in that direction to see what was the last paragraph style that was used, last thing written in this style. So if you're using this paragraph style correctly to make those chapter titles, it will keep looking up the document. So at every beginning of every chapter where you have the new chapter title, this will then change to mirror whatever it says there. You could also add stuff to it. So if you wanted to add like any of these kind of things or you could write chapter whatever or you could add like custom stuff in there. For now, let's just have it copy what it says. And I'm going to hit OK. So now see it became one of these. So I can hit done. And then here, I can put it in here now. So I can go here, right click, insert variable, and I can put advanced digital main title. And you click that, it says that there. But now when we go here, see it says project two. And it says that because if you go up the document, the last time it used that style was here. Now look what happens. As soon as we go past this one, so here it still should say project 2. And let's do this. I'm going to go back to my master. And just to make it easier on you guys, I'm going to make this one, even though I want it to be smaller later. Actually, no, let's do this. I'm going to make one just out here that's going to be in a different paragraph style. So that you can actually see it. So here we got project two, and then on this page, see now it says project two there. Once you go past this one and it says project three, that will say project three there. Here we got an issue because this has the wrong paragraph style. That should really have B on both of these so if you drag that there that's how this one should look here it's project 4 because this lives in project 4 so that's something that's really neat because you anywhere you use that it will change and if I take this exact page so let me click here so if I take these two pages and I move them above here it's looking up the document right towards the earlier pages to see what the last paragraph style was used so if I move this in front of that page watch down here where it says project 4 it will change you have to there you go give it a second but now it actually reads project 3 because it's been moved into the project 3 section whereas there's project 3 now if we move it back after this one this will become project 4 and it doesn't matter. So you can take these and shuffle them all around. All I need to do is now look at add a page and then throw this master on there and it will just fill in that whole bottom on its own. You could also add it like we had before where it said the subtitle too. So if I go to my master, I can delete this one. And then here, I could edit that one to have like stuff after it or I can then insert a variable this one was already doing it so I can then go back and see it says project for environment and also later but it's like overlapping so then here we could go to our master and you can either add a space you could put like a dash thing like that and then now we look at it so this is project for environmental analysis with ladybug and then when you go down to the next chapter, or up one chapter, 
this one at the bottom says Project 3, SketchUp, and Podium. And it's really that easy. Now it'll always do it for you. So the best thing you can do with these is setting them up from the beginning so that it starts generating all these things for you. Um, another thing that I get asked all the time is why can't does it get messed up sometimes? And it, it really just, as long as you have this layout where you have an intro slide at each project, there's no way it gets messed up. And don't use this style. So if you need to, make a unique style that you only use at the beginning of each chapter, um, and then it can change. The other cool thing is, let's say we want to have multiple chapters or like subcategories within Project 3. We could have Project 3, SketchUp, and Podium. So we could then go here and say, starting with SketchUp. And then these pages would all read Project 3, starting with SketchUp. And then eventually we could add a paragraph style that says um, rendering with podium in this style. And now that second sec section would change. So like if you look in a book, like real books, this is how they do it. So there's always like the chapter and oftentimes they tell you like up at the top or on the side, depending on the book, it'll say whatever like the last thing it said is and if you look I guarantee you when you look at those and you look at all these different little sections and then you go back to the table of contents it's the exact same thing because the way these are referenced they'll pull the text that you're getting from the beginning and just drop it in there so let's look at that now because that gets really cool so the key though is if you if you don't understand how to do the paragraph style it's really going to make it a lot harder so I think one thing so let's see paragraph so I have here oh, that should be body text there this one should be subheadings there you go and this one is chapter titles so that's the correct way for them to look based off what I have set up and then down here this one says project 3 foreground why does it say project 3 foreground I guess that's what it's referencing is this oh that's referencing the basic paragraph so if I go now watch this if I go in here this one doesn't have one so let's go back to my master and let's see so that one's called running header let's go uh, type text variables define and so that was this one and we can edit it and tell it don't look for basic look for chapter subheadings first on page and you hit OK and then done now we can go here and say it'll say Frank's vacation home there's no issue there so it just happened to be that whatever we had before was, was saying the same thing but now it will always be correct so that's one of those things where it seems complicated but in reality it's just setting that one little style and once it's been set and you drop it on your master you don't need to worry about it it's actually less work than making 20 masters and changing each one because you're just doing one thing